Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to show you how to calculate the standard deviation. What we're going to do first though is we're going to do what we call the population standard deviation. What that means is that the values used form the complete population. So there's two different kinds of standard deviations. One, we can have like a set of 20 numbers, for example, right here, and that's the entire population of all the numbers. There's no others. And therefore, we're going to calculate the standard deviation of this. That's what, we're that's what we're going to do here, and we call that the population standard deviation. Also, a way to look at it is that the values all have an even probability of occurring. So we've accounted for every value, and every value can occur with equal probability. Here we drew a, what we call a histogram chart. It shows you the, the distribution of how many times each number occurs, and you can see that it's not a nice normal curve what we normally would expect from a large population. This is a relatively small population, so we don't expect a normal distribution. But we can still calculate the standard deviation. Now, for a very large population, let, let's say the population of all the people in the country, that would be such an enormous number, we can take a subset of that, maybe a thousand, we can sample a thousand people, and that thousand, that subset of a thousand, may be a fairly good representation of the entire population. So then we would have a thousand numbers, then they would be representative of the entire population. So that's another way of doing it, and we'll show you that on the next video. So in this video, this is the entire population. Again, the uh, standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance, and the variance is equal to the sum of the difference between each number and the average number, that quantity squared, and divided by the total number that we have. The total number is n. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. The first thing we want to do is find the average value for all those numbers. And so all we have to do then is the average value x is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n, and there's 20 numbers, x sub i divided by n. So we sum them all up, and let's do that. That would be 5, that would be 9, 13 plus 20 is 33, that's 39, 45. 45, that would be 52, 59, 66, 74, 82. Um, that would be 91, 101, plus 4, that's 105. 115, 125, that would be 140. And since there's 20 numbers, divided by 20. And so the average value would be 7. So that's the average value of those 20 values up there. Okay, so now what we do is we calculate the standard deviation. Oh, yes. Thank you. I forgot that. All right. So now the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the sum of all these. Um, so, let's go ahead and put a big square root down. So we're going to take the difference between all of these. So we have 2 minus 7. We're going to square that. So that was the first number. And that would be plus 3 minus 7. And we square that. Plus. Now there's two of those. So to make it easy, we can write it twice or simply write 2 times 4 minus 7, quantity squared. Plus, now there's four fives, so I can do four times five minus seven, quantity squared, plus uh, there's six, uh, two sixes, so that would be two times six minus seven squared. There's three sevens, plus three times seven minus seven squared, plus there's two eights, two times eight minus seven squared, plus there's one nine, one times, I don't have to write one time, so that simply would be 9 minus 7 squared. I'll continue over here. It's a little unorthodox way of writing it, but since I'm simply out of room, I'm just going to put a second row there. And I think you understand what I'm trying to do here. So now we have uh, 10 minus 7 squared plus we have two 12s. So that would be 2 times 2 times 12 minus 10 squared and plus 15 minus 10 squared, and the whole thing divided by, well, n is the total number of numbers that we have. We have 20 numbers, so we take the whole thing divided by 20. This represents the variance. We take the square root of the variance, and we get the standard deviation. All right, so now we need a calculator. And so we have 5 squared, that would be 25, plus 4 squared, that's 16, plus 3 squared, that's 9 times 2, that's 18, plus, that would be 4 times 4, which is 16, 
plus, and here we have 1 times 2, which is 2 plus, that would be 0, and that would be 1 times 2, that would be 2 plus, here we have 2 squared, that's 4 plus, here we have 3 squared, which is 9 plus, that would be, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I got the wrong numbers here, this is 7 and 7, I got carried away, okay, that would be 5 squared, that's 25 times 2, that's 50 plus, and that would be difference of 8 squared, that would be 64 equals, and so let me write the intermediate value down, so sigma is equal to the square root of 206 divided by 20, and let's try that, so divide by 20 equals, and take the square root of that, and I get 3.209, that's what I get, 3.209, all right, one more time, just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So it's always, in these kind of exercises, it's not a bad idea to do it twice independently, just to make sure you didn't make a mistake somewhere. So that's uh, 5 squared, that would be 25, plus 50, 16, plus, and here that's 8 squared, which is 64, equals, ah, I get 206. Oh, I get the same number. I did it correctly, divided by 20, so this is probably correct. And so the standard deviation is... 3.209. Now, to get a feel for what that means, remember that we have typically a normal distribution. For a large population, instead of having something that looks like that, it looks more like this. So we have the average value at the top, and then we know that about 68.2%, so 68.2% of the total population would lie between plus or minus one sigma, that would be plus one sigma, that would be minus one sigma, so it would be plus or minus one sigma away from the average or the mean, so that would be the average right here. In some cases, that may be the expected value as well. All right, and so let's say that the average value was seven. Seven plus sigma, seven plus 3.2, let's run after two, that would be 10.2, and 7 minus 3.2 would be, uh, be um, 3.8, because 3.8 plus 3.2 is 7. So what this is saying, that if our population was a more normal distribution, we can expect that 68.2% of all our values would lie between plus or minus 1 sigma away from the average. That would mean 68.2% of values would lie between 10.2 and 3.8. Let's check that and see how close we got. We wouldn't expect to be too close because obviously it's not a nice um, smooth curve as from a normal distribution. But let's see here how many numbers fall between 3.8 and 10.2. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So how many numbers? That would be from 4 all the way to 10. Okay, and how many is that? That would be 15 out of 20. So we can say that 15 out of 20 fall within plus or minus one sigma, and that would be 75%. So actual, we're 75%, theoretically would be 68.2, and it's actually not that far apart from the theoretical value. Now you would find that if you have a much larger population where the distribution is much more normal, you would figure out that you'd be much closer to the theoretical value. But it's not bad in this particular case. So that's why we calculate the standard deviation, is to get a feeling for how well our population is distributed about the mean. If sigma is very small, that means the population is very tight, there's not a lot of variation from the average. If sigma is really big, then the population is, the values are distributed over a long range and there's a lot of variation in the distribution. For example, let's say that you're a manufacturer of screws and you want all the screws to be the exact same length. And so you, you manufacture a million screws, you pick out a thousand of those screws, you measure them carefully, you lay out what the length is of each of the screws, and you want to make sure that they're all just about the same length. If sigma is really tiny, you have a good process that manufactures them exactly the way you want to. But if there's a lot of variation in there, there's something wrong with your manufacturing process, you want to go and try to fix that because you don't want that large variation. You don't want those large sigmas. It's that way in anything you produce, anything you, you value, you want to make sure that the distribution is very small. If you build light bulbs, you want them all to last about the same amount of time. If you build tires, you want them la all to last about the same time. If you build a tire that's supposed to last for 
30,000 miles and there's a lot of variation in the quality of the tire and some tires only last 15,000 miles, that would be really bad. You'd have a lot of unhappy customers. And so that's why you want to check your manufacturing process. You want to check your distribution so that you want to make sure that that sigma is very small and the numbers are very close to the average. And that's why we need to know how to calculate sigma and what it means. And that's how we do that.